Look at this photograph. I'll give you $10,000 and my Clay Buckholtz autographed ball from 2010 if you can tell me what that big ugly box is. No, it's not a camera, or a light tower, or an alien satellite spying on a baseball game. This rectangular contraption is a 3D Doppler radar system called the TrackMan. It was invented by a couple of Danish golf players in 2003, and was originally designed to track the movement path and spin of long opening drives down the fairway of a golf course. But that was 19 years ago. Now, this goofy looking giant robot is the reason why Forrest Whitley was selected 17th overall by the Astros in 2017. It's part of the reason for why, until MLB caught up with them, pitchers were using sneaky sticky substances to get more backspin on their fastballs. And more than anything, baseball maniacs like me have TrackMan to thank for the gorgeous pitch overlays, pitch breakdowns, and spin data we use as ammunition in our arguments about which pitchers deserve to be drafted first in our fantasy leagues. It might seem trivial at first, but all your favorite pitchers subscribe to the data produced by TrackMan and other common radar systems like it. Because MLB teams spend millions of dollars of their revenue scrambling to find, develop, and revolutionize the radar guns that give them pitch scouting data, pitchers have to keep track of these numbers too, just so they know they're keeping up. No longer is it the pitching coach's job to eyeball a pitcher's stuff at a tryout and say, gee Skip, I'd sign this kid today if I were you. In fact, I would argue that these pitch tracking systems alone have won more influence on today's baseball, and especially the statistical experience of watching and following baseball, than Billy Bean, defensive shifting, and the Philly Fanatic combined. If you visit your local MLB stadium these days, you'll see that somewhere in one of the electronic scoreboards is a little feed that records the horizontal and vertical movement of every pitch. It blinks out numbers like 10 inches horizontal or negative 40 inches vertical. For this sinker from Sandy Alcantara, for example, the Lone Depot Park monitor would display negative 19 horizontal, negative 22 vertical. The break values themselves are pretty easy to understand. If the horizontal value is negative, it means the pitch is breaking a certain distance to the pitcher's glove side. This is how sliders, cutters, and curveballs usually behave. If the value is positive, that means the pitch is breaking a certain distance to the pitcher's arm side. That's how four-seam fastballs, sinkers, and change-ups usually behave. The vertical value is always going to be negative because gravity makes it impossible for a baseball to ascend in its flight path, even though some pitches may appear to rise due to optical illusions as they approach home plate. Here, Alec Manoa's slider to Ryan Mountcastle breaks 13 inches to his glove side, so the horizontal value is minus 13 inches. Meanwhile, it also breaks more than three feet vertically for a drop value of minus 43.2 inches. This is all a pretty new development. In the past, ballparks were content with showing us just the pitch type and the velocity. Now, if you want to know exactly how many inches of horizontal break Shohei Otani's slider has, all you have to do is look up from your Angel Stadium nachos. Spin rate is another thing that teams and pitchers have come to pay a lot of attention to thanks to the TrackMan radar. At its most basic level, spin rate is simply a measurement of the number of times the ball rotates in a minute, or RPM. Here's a four-seam fastball from Lance Lynn that spun at a rate of 2,612 RPM. But how does this TrackMan thing really work? How can it measure how fast a sinker zips or how much a slider spins? Come to think of it, what the hell is radar anyway? Measuring velocity and spin with radar guns depends entirely on the Doppler effect. That's right, the same Doppler effect you have to remember from 9th grade physics. If you bounce electromagnetic wave signals off of a moving object, like a baseball, using a simple radar gun, the frequency of the waves that bounce back to the gun will increase as the ball gets closer. Using some pretty epic math, the gun calculates velocity based on the difference in frequency between the waves that are sent at the ball and the waves that bounce back. In case you're interested, here is that epic equation for academic purposes. This is how radar guns measure the velocity of a traveling baseball. It isn't too complicated. TrackMan is more than just the most accurate radar system available though. It's basically the Swiss army knife of radar guns. It can measure velocity, horizontal and vertical break, pitch trajectory, and even the spin rate of a moving baseball. The way this works is absolutely fascinating. To explain how TrackMan measures spin rate, take a look at this 81 mile an hour curveball from Shane McClanahan. If you check Baseball Savant's pitch highlighter system, you'll find that this particular baseball apparently spins at a rate of 2,691 rotations per minute. But even if we can see the spin on the video feed and track the velocity, we have no easy way of measuring how many times this ball rotates in a minute with the naked eye. How can we figure out how much this curveball spins so we know exactly how much spider tag to put on our hands in order to be as good as Big Shane? The answer lies in the magic of advanced radar visualization. Imagine you're behind home plate pointing a radar gun at this moving baseball. 
As the ball flies toward you, giving off its electromagnetic waves, the radar signal that it transmits carries a characteristic flicker, meaning basically that its signal is subject to a small, barely perceptible blip the track man can measure and record. The frequency of this blip, or flicker, corresponds exactly to the spin rate of the baseball. There are a bunch of explanations for this flicker effect out there, but the prevailing theory is that the flicker is caused by the fact that different parts of this downward spinning curveball actually travel at different speeds, creating an irregularity in the waves that bounce back off of the baseball. Here's how it happens. If any kind of spherical ball, whether it's a ping pong ball, tennis ball, or baseball travels with enough topspin, the top of the ball will always be spinning a bit faster than the middle of the ball. The middle of the ball, in turn, moves a bit faster than the bottom of the ball. Therefore, different parts of the ball bounce a slightly different frequency back to the radar gun. This irregularity in frequencies is the source of the blip. It's certainly not something you could pick up just by squinting your eyes. After baseball scouts discovered TrackMan in the mid-2010s, it gradually replaced baseball's antiquated pitch FX system, which had monopolized the pitch tracking job since 2006. TrackMan gave clubs a whole new wealth of information with which to assess their pitching prospects. Because of a perceived relationship between fastball spin rate and fastball effectiveness, young pitchers with higher spin rates on their heaters have had an advantage in draft circles. Hence, Forrest Whitley and his Demon 3000 RPM forcing fastball, finding themselves drafted in the first round by the subsequent world champion Astros who, say what you like about them, have figured out a thing or two about scouting young players. All those big names who were caught up in the sticky stuff scandals of last season, Garrett Cole, Hugh Darvish, Tyler Malley, and others, use the data produced by systems like TrackMan to constantly judge and measure their own pitches to try and improve their spin rates. At the height of the sticky stuff epidemic in 2019, batters were striking out at unheard of rates, swinging under high spin fastballs that never seemed to drop. The idea was, basically, more spin equals better fastballs and generally better pitches, right? But we baseball maniacs know that nothing is as straightforward as it seems. Even though TrackMan can help you measure how much your fastball spins so you can work to improve it, it doesn't mean that radar and advanced pitch tracking should be worshipped like gods. Pure spin rate isn't the be-all and end-all of pitching. There are elite pitchers with average or below average spin rates on their awesome pitches. No one can say that Max Free doesn't have an elite fastball or devastating curve just because he sits in the 50th percentile of those pitches when it comes to spin. Spin is only one of the many factors that contributes to the movement and effectiveness of his pitches. Moreover, there are types of pitches that actually work better without incredible spin. And I'm not just talking about knuckleballs. Dylan Tate, who has the best sinking fastball in baseball this season according to run value, ranks in the bottom 5% among pitchers in pure spin rate on his fastball. His sinker works because of how the ball spins, not just how much it spins. What often matters more is the direction of the spin, the angle of the pitcher's arm at release, and how efficiently the ball's spin contributes to its movement. Baseball Savant's active spin leaderboard is a good resource for investigating which pitches spin most effectively. And anyway, if you throw your fastball right down the middle of the plate, it's not going to matter if it has 4,000 RPM. It's going to end up deep in center field, bouncing right into someone's nachos. Sorry, Garrett.